Hi, my name is Miranda Manley. I'm the Social Studies Department Chair at Clark Shaw Magnet School. I'm going to introduce you to a mysterious man from Selma who inspired our school's bicentennial project. This video is going to be a sample of what our students' oral history projects will look like to help us celebrate the Alabama Bicentennial. A pivotal moment in my development as an educator occurred right before I graduated from college. As a future teacher, it was one of the most embarrassing yet life-changing moments. I met a principal at a job fair who was recruiting teachers for Selma, Alabama. He asked if I had ever heard of the Edmund Pettus Bridge, Selma March, or Bloody Sunday. I admitted to him that I was not from Alabama and was not familiar with Selma information. He quickly removed a photograph from his wallet. He placed it in my hand and asked me to identify the people. I recognized Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King. The principal pointed to the man holding Mrs. King's hand and said, That's me. I marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge with Dr. King. If you plan to teach history in Alabama, you'd better go study what happened in Selma. I made a promise to him that day, and the mystery man became a part of every civil rights lesson I have ever taught. I spent 17 years trying to find the name of the man from Selma. I only had the memory of his face and the photograph that he showed me. The mystery man became one of my biggest regrets. I was young and busy. I thought I'd be able to find his name and story in the university library or later the internet, but I couldn't find it. Who was he? From that moment forward, I vowed to find personal living histories in the people and places around me and teach my students to do the same. I have always reminded them of how important it is to put a name with a story. As a result of this, I teach the Holocaust using the story of a local Auschwitz survivor, Agnes Tannenbaum, whose American father was born in New York City to Hungarian immigrants. He moved to Hungary as a result of the Great Depression, and she moved to America after World War II. I bring her friends to my classes to recount her stories and show photographs of me with her. As Americans, we each have personal stories that provide testimony to our nation's history. My students know that people's stories inspire me, and that encourages them to find inspiration in oral histories as well. My story of the principal from Selma intrigued my students. They challenged me to search and figure out who the mystery man from Selma is. They didn't accept my excuses that I had researched Selma for 17 years and couldn't find him anywhere. So I did the last thing I knew to do. I traveled to the streets of Selma and crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Investigating brought me to a Selma author named Teresa Hall. She worked as a park ranger in the Selma Interpretive Center. After recounting my story and looking at many pictures in the museum, she led me to the third floor where there was a banner of the courageous eight. There he was, the mystery man from Selma. There was the photograph from all those years earlier. There was his name. His name was Dr. Frederick Reese. I asked Miss Hall where he was, and she replied, Selma, of course. Within minutes, I was on the phone with Dr. Reese and then on my way to his house. I got to reintroduce myself to him, tell my story, and explain his influence on my career. I thanked him for teaching me about Selma and reminded him that I was here in Selma because of him. He laughed when I told him that I had searched for him for so long and that he was the mystery man in my life. Dr. Reese passed away in, in April 2018, but I will continue to share his legacy. Dr. Reese founded the Dallas County Voters League to help African Americans get rid of the obstacles that prevented them from voting. He was instrumental in getting Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to come to Selma. Dr. Reese led teachers in the first marches in Selma. The teachers encountered Sheriff Jim Clark and were arrested and lost their jobs. They did not give up and continued to fight for voting rights and seek others to join them in the movement. Dr. Reese knew that if America saw the brutality and injustices that were happening in Selma, that change would happen. He needed Dr. King to help expose what was occurring in Selma. Bloody Sunday and Turnaround Tuesday were two famous marches in Selma before the 54-mile Selma to Montgomery march, which resulted in the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. I will never forget Dr. Reese and the day I was reunited with him in Selma. 
I recently found this telegram that Dr. King sent to Dr. Reese at the same address I visited. Dr. King acknowledged the power of the Selma teachers in fighting injustices. I can't help but realize that as a teacher who was also inspired by Dr. Reese, that I have an obligation to continue to educate youth on the importance of voting rights and why they shouldn't take those rights for granted. The ripples of change that occurred in Selma, Alabama, are not all centered on the civil rights movement. Dr. Reese invited Dr. King to march, and Dr. Reese inspired me to teach living history. Long ago, I made up my mind to do just that and create living lessons, which turn even my most reluctant learners into historians. Now my students are gathering and preserving their own oral histories. We will be traveling to Montgomery to visit the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, the Legacy Museum, and to Selma, where my students and I will meet Dr. Frederick Reese's family to march the Edmund Pettus Bridge together. We are dedicating the Clark Shaw Bicentennial Oral History Project in memory of Dr. Frederick Reese.